connected right mm-hmm. and let me begin and say it's so good to see you good to see i you said too, 30 guys. you said 32 About 32 years it's been um, such a long time yep. and you look well and healthy thank and, you i try uh, to take care of myself yeah and thank you for you know accepting my invite and coming on to the show today thanks for having me here because yeah. uh we was uh performing last night <laughs> in williamsport and um I kept saying, was I going to be able to get out of there Thursday, you know? So yeah. this morning we decided to come down and pick up some of the grandkids. Okay. I said, let me, let me call Dawson and see right. if I can get, the, get in the interview. And so now you're ready to take us through your musical journey, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So okay, so go it's ahead. A Let's long begin. Journey. It starts back. <laughs> okay. Way back. Uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit, but uh, actually, uh, Coming up in North Philly, it was always music around us. Uh, I was born right there, 2020 North Woodstock Street in North Philadelphia. Right. And my next door neighbor was Larry Pop Pop Brown of the Blue Notes. Oh, uh, he was okay. a teenager and uh, he used to watch myself and uh, his nephew and my sisters and a couple other kids out there. But he always had some vocal things going on. Mm-hmm. Then he disappeared, I think, when he got out of school. and. And he ended up coming back in the neighborhood in a Cadillac a process, <laughs> a whole bit. And yeah. we thought he was a movie star, uh-huh. but he was uh, actually with Harold Melvin and Blue Nose okay. back then. And um, as time went on, uh, as I got in junior high school, we moved into a different neighborhood. And uh, it was musicians all over the place. Yeah. Uh, uh, right on my block, uh, we had a little band, guys that just started playing. And we had a little band, and, and one of the guys that lived on our block was one of the Eminons. Okay. Uh, and uh, they actually had rehearsal on our block. And this was the first time, like, up close, we got to see, like, a real professional recording group. We were hearing their record on the radio, and who was, who was playing with them was Fat Larry. Okay. You know, yeah. and we looking through the window and everything, and when they finished playing, we got to meet Larry and uh some of the other musicians that was playing with them and um from that point on once we got we was, i was heading over to thomas edison for high school and larry was going to school there yeah. and he was like doing he was in like the music program over there mm-hmm. and um we got we just locked in with him mm-hmm. and uh just tagged along and um one day he told us like where they was going to be playing at and then um yeah. i think they were doing the uptown mm-hmm. he said look friday morning I don't want to say it, but we left school Friday morning, went over to the Uptown rehearsal. Okay. And that just like opened up a whole new I door. I know it did. Yeah, I it was all it over from there. You know, I started seeing guys like uh, Norman Harris, uh, yeah. Ronnie Baker, that whole MFSB crew, mm-hmm. you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Leon Mitchell. Oh, Leon uh, Mitchell. Those guys, you know, uh, Sam Reed. Sam was Reed. It? Yeah, too, Sam yeah. Reed. Mm-hmm. He was a band director. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we was like little kids and we just like latched on and kept hanging out, kept learning and different things of that nature. And and what happened, um, Larry told me, he said, come on across town. It was a little club they were playing at. And here we are, we kids, we teenagers. And uh, we got in 
and um, his, he introduced me to a, a female bass player by the name of Marlene and a drummer by the name of Nate. And I started playing with those guys around a little bit. I'm like 10th grade in high school. Then they said, look, uh, the Epsilons need a, a rhythm section. So we went and started rehearsing with them. That was my first encounter. This was in the late 60s. That was my first encounter with McFadden and Whitehead. McFadden and Whitehead, mm -hmm. okay. And um, I played with those guys for like five years. Oh, uh, I got to see a little bit, you know, a lot of, you know, professional stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, during the course of the time I was playing with them, I was always in touch with Larry, mm -hmm. you know, because every time it was the Uptown show and he was playing with the Manhattans at the time. And we would go hang out at the uh, backstage mm -hmm. and things like that. And um, we got to see a lot of stuff. Got to meet a lot of people, be around a lot of stuff. Uh, Larry ended up uh, with the Manhattans. And actually one time, uh, I think Earl Young was out doing something else and Larry ended up playing with the house band. Okay. And he was on the show. Okay. And, um, you know, like, we like little followers, you know, we, <laughs> we was Johnny yeah. on the spot, you yeah. know, just trying to get there. But once once I got with uh, the Epsilon, that was my first actual group that had a record out. Okay. And even though I didn't play on their record, but I knew I was destined to get into recording. Yes, things, you were. You know, and yes. I started seeing all the so people great. Yeah. that was connected with uh, Philadelphia International, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. Uh, during the course of the time I was with the Epsilons, uh, McFadden Whitehead started writing hits. They did Backstabber. They yeah. wrote 992 yeah. arguments. Yeah. Listen to the clock on the wall. <laughs> Slippery, shady, jealous yeah. kind of people. And uh, they did, uh, what was that? I'll Always Love My Mama on Intruders. Yeah. And I was still playing in the group, but they had became the talk of the town. Mm -hmm. And they were doing a lot of writing and they were in the office, but we, they always wanted to perform. So we kept gigging, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I learned so much, you know, musically from them. Mm -hmm. and, and one of our famous mottos was to be strong, you know, whatever. <laughs> when you're on stage, be and that's, strong. And that's still a motto, yeah, right? Be strong on yeah, stage, strong. go all out, you know. Mm -hmm. And just coming up around Whitehead, this guy was like, he was always extra, you know, on stage. He was like the, the, the energy on stage. Mm -hmm. I mean, them guys would come up to me and uh, tell me, look, they used to call me Faint. Faint, play this. Why are we on the show performing? Or they would say, play this. And I started playing it. Next thing you know, they off into something else. You know? <laughs> okay. and, and that's how I learned. You know, there's a okay. lot of stuff that we mm -hmm. improvised on stage. You know, that's why I always say those guys was my mentors, because they really pushed me. You know, uh, from there, uh, Larry was still moving around, and he ended up with the Delphonics. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he left the Manhattans and the young boy that was playing drums with us, uh, Claude Truesdale, we called him Bumpy. He told, he said, Bumpy, look, Manhattan's gonna open up, go audition for him, cause I'm leaving, I'm gonna rec recommend you. Oh. Bumpy was in junior high school. He ended up with the Manhattans. He was going to Gillespie. And um, he ended up with the Manhattans. He graduated and went to grads, but he was always on the road. You know, he was just a kid. We was kids, yeah. you know. Um, I stayed with the Epsilon, you know, but at some point in time, something said they're not going to be going on the road too much longer because their writing they're thing writing was getting so big. Stuff, yeah. And um, Gamble and Huff thing was like going to the next level. So um, I said, you know, I was looking for something to do. And Larry popped up again. He said, look, <laughs> I'm going to eventually be going with these guys called Blue Magic. Keep your ears open or whatever. So I did. And he ended up uh, calling me for the audition. Mm -hmm. And I hung around those guys for a minute. You know, they had another guitar player, Billy Combs. He used to play with the Delphonics. And um, I think he played, I uh, caught him a couple times with Mose Davis, playing blues around the clubs in Philly. Okay. And um, what happened, uh, we ended, I ended up doing the audition, right? And uh, we were doing some gigs, but I got kind of disappointed because I had left my job and left uh, the Epsilons, and I was like, oh, how is this going to turn out? Yeah. But uh, the records was hot. The records were being played, Spell, you know, uh, mm -hmm. then Look Me Up. That was on the move, and then here comes uh, Side Show. 
you know, and things was moving, you know. Uh, what happened, um, we picked up a uh, bass player, Lee Smith. He left, and um, we got Moises Larry the Best. That was it, right? <laughs> long, long hair. <laughs> I mean, he was psychedelic. You know, he was psychedelic. It was like he he was he was me and him was like two peas in a pod. I remember seeing how you two yeah. were on that stage. Yeah, he was yeah. like two peas yeah. in a pod. You know, he was like the perfect cat to perform with. Mm -hmm. And we put some years in. You know, we did a lot of shit, and we was like roommates and stuff on the road and stuff. So we always was like doing stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we just really locked. Um, then uh, who came along? Uh, we had Shoe Baby Shula. Yeah, now mm -hmm. he was telling me how he got his name. That's where you got that name from. And he said from a friend of yours. He went and told me that you 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 started calling him Shoe Baby. Shoe Baby Shula. <laughs> he, lo he loves it though. That's I know, but we ain't, we ain't gonna get into <laughs> why we called it that. But um, you know, he was with us. Uh, we uh, I think right after my pop passed was my twenty first birthday. And we ended up, this was 1973, <laughs> and we ended up going overseas, opening up for Ike and Tina Turner. Oh, here we oh go. yeah. Here we go. That was, <laughs> here we go. That was, that was like beyond my wildest dreams. Yeah. Here we opened up for Ike and Tina Turner in Copenhagen, Denmark. And it was like, and we got on the show, and our band with Billy Combs, Larry LeBest, Fat Larry, Shoe Baby Shula, and myself, we were we were into uh like uh we, we did like who's that lady by the eyes but mm -hmm. we was doing cover songs then somewhere along the line they said look y'all gonna open up and we was like huh so they let the band come on and do like two or three songs mm -hmm. and it was like we lit it we we, we chilled it did. you know they like did. we were strong we did yes. what we were taught to do mm -hmm. you know and then having larry on drums it was like yeah you know then the guitar player uh billy Combs would do his hendrix solos larry would do a drum solo and the audience was loving that the audience was really loving it um as the tour went on once blue magic came on stage it was like a whole nother level or something you know uh <laughs> They they took it to another level with all the clothes, mm -hmm. the hats, the, the steps, steps yeah. the whole performance thing, you know. And then just shout see, out to Blue Magic. They, they, shout they out. was yeah. they was getting it in, you know. Yeah. And they had that uh they had that instinct, that killer instinct on stage too. That's what we liked about them. And the thing about it, those guys was young. Uh, they played basketball, you know, and stuff like that. So like when you see some of the steps they was doing. <laughs> The way KB was jumping around on the stage, he was flying Love up in it. the air. It was it. awesome, you know, and the people, they really loved it. Um, the fireworks, too? <laughs> well, we had some of the pyro stuff at mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. but they actually, they took that away from us in the performance because okay. it was, yeah. it was, it was exciting, you know, <laughs> and they was like doing everything they could to pull us back. And um, when it got to the point where our show went from 45 minutes or whatever, then it went down to a half hour, then it went down to 20 minutes. But like from coming from where we came from, we knew how to medley a show. Mm -hmm. So we would just medley the whole show. But they stopped letting the band open up. You know what I'm saying? But Blue Magic had material like Welcome to the Club. That was like opening. That was like it mm -hmm. didn't matter because we would open the song we would open up with welcome to the club mm -hmm. and then they always had an instrumental part in that song mm -hmm. and look me up had an instrumental part so we would get our little chance to shine but the show the show uh it got condensed down to i think the shortest was about 15 minutes really? but we still pulled it off yeah we still pulled it off and um at some point in time uh now i'm not taking away nothing from the Tina Turner part of the show, <laughs> but Ike Turner and his band, they they were good. They were great as far as we were concerned. But at one point in Germany, uh, while we was on the tour, uh, the audience, when we finished performing the whole show, the audience kept calling back for Blue Magic. Mm -hmm. And in and, and mm -hmm. Germany, we didn't know what they were saying. <laughs> but they were saying, look, they're calling y'all back. But yeah. we could, they wouldn't allow us to do an encore. So uh it must have took about a good good 40 minutes before they let them come on, but they started whistling 
And um, we was like, what's going on? They were saying that means it's boo. That means boo in German, you know? So we was like, whoa. So they had to bring Tina right on. Once Tina came on stage, it was it was all she okay. wrote. And she was powerful. You know, her and the girls, they had a powerful performance. And, and we would sit on the side and watch them because they were, they were, she was part of a powerful show. Um, at some point after that night, you know, we got put off the tour. But y'all got paid for the entire. Yeah, we got paid for the entire tour. They sent us to uh, England, and once we got into England, we was there for like the remainder of the mm -hmm. tour. Sure. But mm -hmm. it was like uh, radio interviews, TV interviews, newspapers, all kinds of interviews the whole week. You know, a week and a half we were there. You know, we got to chill, go out over there hang out and everything but uh it was big news you know it was real big news uh the adventures of uh blue magic you know had just started you know with that and um at this time you know when they came out with the next album they called it the magic of the blue i believe right. and we said that's gonna that's be the our name. name that's the name mm -hmm. that's what we called ourselves the magic of the blue so uh when we we incorporated that name and we would start doing band gigs around town when they were off uh but we had still had to rehearse with them and everything and um you know we, we, we were doing what musicians do you know we kept it moving um then we started doing little recording sessions for for different people different artists then there were different artists coming into uh wmot records mm -hmm. and um larry was trying to get involved and you know i never saw him as a songwriter or or whatever but uh it, it all happened. It's, things started falling in place. Uh, then uh, Magic of the Blue, we we just like after about four years, you know, we wanted to come out on our own, wow. you know. Uh, and and it was it was it was it was kind of weird when it happened. So uh, WMOT Records, they knew we were like a unit, you know. They would uh, they couldn't separate us. So they, the way they mm -hmm. did it, they said we're going to change the name when we came out, and actually. Our lead vocalist was uh, Baby Jim from Double Exposure. See, I didn't know Baby Jim. That was our vocalist. They Double that. Exposure, he sang the record, was it 10% or nothing? Okay. Or 10% or something? He was he was our vocalist with the Magic of the Blue. But uh, WMOT Records, they gave us Daryl Grant, you know. But he was cool. You know, He was, Daryl was good. You know, he did what he did, you know. But the guy, uh, Jim, he was a... Uh, powerhouse vocalist you know uh art austin powerhouse yeah, you know mm -hmm. um and uh we did a, we did the uh first fat larry's band album they changed the name the fat larry's band mm -hmm. so they had defeated you know they had cut yeah. through us like that yeah. but it was cool you know we wanted to get into the business we wanted to get our own deal atlantic records gave us the deal wmot records you know alan um was our manager the whole bit um actually uh nothing really happened big in the united states on that first album but uh center city and fascination you know we recorded fascination over uh, wrote, uh david bowie and luther vandroff wrote those songs mm -hmm. david bowie had it out as fascination luther had it out as funky music mm -hmm. and actually we did a show with luther mm -hmm. and he came over and like congratulated us and thanked us for you know doing the song you know, but it had taken off over in England mm -hmm. in the disco. So, you know, that was a plus for him as a writer mm -hmm. and a performer. So, uh, you know, um, we that was like 76, mm -hmm. you know, uh, then we put another album out and uh, things we had. I think we had one hit off of that overseas. Uh, but um, by that third album, I think we had like Daryl left the group. And um, we had uh, Tony Middleton. Tony Middleton came in, and yeah. Art Austin started singing it. And we picked up George Fairbanks Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, George was percussionist. Tony was guitar. Art was just outright vocalist, powerhouse vocalist. Wasn't he a powerhouse? Yeah, powerhouse vocalist. And um, they, Tony and Larry, guys, got together and wrote the uh, "Looking for Love." Mm -hmm. But jumping back, I forgot you and Larry have wrote. A, some things too. Oh yeah, and you, yeah. you know we're talking about that song Center City, mm -hmm. and that was you know I've always been a songwriter, but I couldn't get anything published. Mm -hmm. And so I was at WMOT one day, 
and Lynn Barry was there. Okay. And um, Lynn Barry was writing the song, and he was sitting there. He said, "I need some help writing writing the song." I was sitting there. I said, "I'm going. I help you." Mm -hmm. And I jumped up, and that was the first song that I ever had published was Center City. Mm -hmm. And uh, I talked to Lynn Barry like about two weeks ago because, you know, it's been like 32, 33 wow. years. Okay. And he's still doing good. I'm trying to bring him in. Mm -hmm. Well, that should do, be hard. He, he likes to talk. He <laughs> likes to talk. And I'm trying to bring him in for an interview. Yeah, he got history. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. That's how I love him. <laughs> yeah, so, I, you know, oh, yeah. I, was, I was thankful for him because he gave me that opportunity. Mm -hmm. He and wrote then Zoom. He wrote, and yeah. And I mean, and then he was very, uh, you know how you go into a new company and they, mm -hmm. they, they don't want you to get involved in it. He said, come on, come on, and mm -hmm. come on, let's do this together. So I thank him for that. I thank him for that a couple of oh, weeks yeah, ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Larry and I wrote a lot of songs. Y'all did a lot of stuff. We did a lot, a lot of songs. Um, when you said you couldn't vision him as a songwriter, mm -hmm. okay, we were songwriters together. I, and I saw it happen happened. right that's before my eyes. Uh, yeah. When he met you, and yeah. next thing you know, y'all writing songs. Next <laughs> thing you know, y'all married. The whole bit. We was like, whoa. Uh, what, one of the songs, y'all wrote the song for uh, Sweet Thunder. Uh, well, did y'all write that, baby? I need you. Larry did. Larry, Larry wrote did. that. Larry and Charles. Larry One Charles. of the guys in the group, wasn't it? Yeah, it was three. It was 33. What was his name? Charles Bowie, uh, the guitar player. I, I don't know if his last name was, mm. it was Charles and Larry and somebody else. Was it Booker? Booker, it the lead Booker, 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 Booker T. Yeah. Newberry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was Wasn't that a too. monster? That was a monster tune. And it was just four of them. Yeah. Four piece rhythm section that could sing. They could sing. We yeah, met them. Booker we something. met them in Youngstown when we was out with Blue Magic. But how uh, did they get to Allen? Uh, through us. Through Larry. Oh, that's how they got Yeah, there? they came, they were at the show, they came backstage, and they were talking to Larry and talking to us, and they said who they were, and um the whole nine yards. So once we started Fat Larry's band and doing some things that Larry started writing, he stayed in touch with them. So he called them and they came in the WMOT and uh lit lit it up. Mm -hmm. They lit it up. Yeah, they were they were powerhouse. Yeah, they were awesome group. A awesome band, vocal yeah, band. They were, they were good. You know, um, the uh, as time went on, uh, you know, we went through like maybe three different bands. You know, uh, as Fat Larry's band, uh, yeah. people got frustrated. You know, yeah, a lot of people were frustrated with uh, uh, some of them took it out on Larry, but it was actually an Al Liam on T Records. They <laughs> wasn't doing what they were supposed to do. As you saw, like even with Blue Magic, you know, they did the best with what they could do with. But you know they was looking they was looking for hits. I think we were their first band, mm -hmm. and and they didn't know actually how to do whatever you know yeah. do what they needed to do with a band. You know uh, how you handle a band is much different than different than you handle vocal, vocal group. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, who was it? Major Harris came along. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Uh, What's his name? David Simmons. Oh yeah, we did a lot of songs for him. did some songs. Yeah. We also played on that mm -hmm. album yeah. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were at the light recording studio right down on Ridge Avenue in my neighborhood. And for uh, our budget for cutting our album, <laughs> they brought in Frankie Double Dutch Bus. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They brought him in mm -hmm. on our budget. And Larry and Larry LeBest, they played on the track. You know, uh, it, it was out of our money. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And he had a, what, platinum? He had yeah. a gold record off of that double dutch bus thing you know and that's uh, a lot of people might not know that's fat larry's band on yeah, that you know yeah. <laughs> let, let me interrupt you for a second and say hi to mm -hmm. um see if i can get them it's uh uh gary and carol mitchell and jim bob what's happening <laughs> thompson gable and oh is that Patricia Ak Atkins? I think it's still in there. Atkins, Charles Carter, Kevin Barnes, Dina Daniels. Oh, Mike Tyler. Hi. Mike Tyler. You got uh, Willie you know, Hill. That's like family. Yeah, I know Mike Tyler, guitar player. What's happening, Mike? 
Tim Lancaster. I see Judy Anderson. They're going to voice uh, is the best on there. No, he's not. I see you on here. Larry the best on there. <laughs> well, thank you, What's guys. What's up, Larry? Thank you for joining us today. And we're uh, talking with uh, Ted Cohen on uh, Philly Live Radio. And we're also on Facebook Live, as you can see. Okay, let's continue. Okay, okay. Uh, where were we at with... Uh, with the writing, the songwriting and stuff. I even like uh, the first the first album, I wrote a tune called, uh, I came up with a concept about a song with, uh, called, it was about nobody knows the life of entertainers, something to that effect. Uh, nobody knows, the, but I can't sing, sing it, but uh, I think it was on the first album. And uh, Larry joined in, joined in it, nobody knows the life of an entertainer. Mm -hmm. And um, on that album, uh it was it was it felt in more like an album cut you know yeah, okay um but it got on it you know mm -hmm. um that was my first experience of writing yeah uh and uh on the and also on the first album was uh uh what was it i co-wrote like nighttime boogie oh yeah uh, that was bad we just want to play that was for really you. nice that was nice uh me and larry and uh larry the mm -hmm. best we had wrote them songs like while we was with the magic of the blues so okay. when it came to pass you know how about fun. boogie town you boogie town, town? Yeah, yeah, I, I was. I, I yeah, wrote, Tony Middleton. Yeah, yeah, I know you wrote yeah. part of that. Yeah, with Tony Middleton came in song. with the with the talk box. Mm -hmm. I put the rhythm in and stuff. You know, it was it was an awesome tune. That was a whole different. That was a whole different thing for Fat Larry's band. Mm -hmm. But it was a disco. It yeah. was a disco song, and it took off good in the disco. Mm -hmm. uh, we we started working a little bit more. Uh, the uh, what was that? Uh, Looking the night for love. Look, look into night, yep. the bright city lights. Yep. Yeah, that one right there kind of like pushed us over, you know. And I think that was the first song that actually came out on sheet music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could yeah. actually go in the store, go in the and store and buy it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a good song for us. Um, we started, you, you know, you could tell we started doing gigs with like Cool in the Gang. We did some work with GQ, mm -hmm. you know, and you know things started. It just put us in another bracket a booking um and uh we didn't get us overseas yet but it was that wasn't it, by 79 uh you guys had our sunrise yeah and uh the space base space base space base, yeah, space took base. off overseas yeah. sunrise took off in yeah. the usa and um, they put together the tour you know the fat larry band slick tour mm -hmm. and went over and did great britain and uh, it was awesome then we had fun too. it was awesome that yeah. is that was, that was really we had fun. finally got overseas you know <laughs> got back overseas you know uh yeah. and i remember the gigs you know like it was it was a whole nother level for us i mean we had the tour bus uh we hadn't seen that kind of stuff since mm -hmm. blue magic yeah. days you know we had the tour bus they gave us we had parrot like they were selling uh all types of t-shirts and yeah. little buttons and stickers and stuff. We had tour jackets. It was so different over mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Than here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, you know? They really, they really appreciate. Yeah. It was yeah. totally different over there. They really appreciate live entertainment mm -hmm. overseas. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, we would be signing autographs and yeah. things like that. You know, um, like when we were Blue Magic and we played places like uh, Steel Pier, and uh, like Disneyland, when we played those places, you know, people was taking pictures and we were signing autographs and stuff like that. But we hadn't seen that until we got overseas, this Fat Larry's band. And it was like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. You know, exactly. it really it really did something to let us know that we was on the right track. And I have the, the uh, itinerary, itinerary. I have that. I still um, got it too. I still, and I was looking through, a, I was cleaning up my basement the other day mm -hmm. and I happened to look. And it's there with Larry's fat face, remember with the hat on, mm -hmm. you know, and I said, oh my God, does this bring, it brought me to tears. I still this got it. This brings yeah. back tears, right? When mm -hmm. you go through all of this, see all the pictures and all the things. That, so and it was an experience and mm -hmm. something that you never, never will forget. Exactly. Yeah. Now, when did Freddie come? I can't remember. Freddie came later on. Uh, actually, he came in 81 because like, it was just our equipment got stolen and whatever mm -hmm. went crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony, he left. Uh, Art left. So it was me, Larry, Larry, and the best. It was us three and Khalif on sax. Khalif, Doug yeah. Khalif Jones on sax. Mm -hmm. um, and 
we was just trying to wait to get a deal uh to see what we could what happened but we we you know we we hung in there and um at some point in time um terry price started get got on uh wmot's writing staff too yeah. Yeah. and uh hey terry yeah <laughs> terry's on there oh we just no, went, say, say. Hey, terry. but uh he got uh, on the writing yeah. staff he came over from gamble huffing them and he was like co-writing on a lot of stuff over there you know and uh he was doing a lot of big things over there with gamble and huff and uh i knew terry from a group called the novaks mm -hmm. that were also in that neighborhood with a uh, whitehead and the eminons and all them we knew i knew him from back then and um when he came over to a WMOT writing staff, you know, that was like, okay, you know, like something new for him, you know, and it was something new for right. uh, WMOT. Uh, and it was a bunch of other guys over there too. But you know, I asked you a question and I can answer. I know how Freddie came because I was introduced to Freddie, his wife. I met his wife. Okay, Wanda. And Wanda. Hi, Wanda. If you're here, hi. Hey, Wanda. I was introduced to Wanda. And Wanda was telling me about her husband who could sing. Mm -hmm. And I invited him over to our home in Sickleville. And he came over about two or three times. And boy, oh boy, he could really sing. I yeah. mean, I think we came over for rehearsal he, one time. Yeah, but and we wait a minute. Him. But Larry would listen to him. You know how stubborn Larry mm -hmm. was. And I said, Larry, you got to listen to this. Oh, no, no, no. You just keep working with him. So one day he was singing and Larry walked in the house. That was the last time Freddie worked with me. Larry <laughs> took him away. Like back that instant, he became a superstar. Mm -hmm. But the boy Freddie could sing. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. He was awesome. He opened his mouth and you couldn't do anything but mm -hmm. listen. Yeah. He could really sing. Yeah, right? I really enjoyed working with him. Um he he took us to another level vocal yeah. wise and uh you know, he did, uh, Zoom, did Zoom and act like, act you, like know. you know that yeah. whole breaking out album. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, Terry started singing and playing keyboards. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Alfonso Martin doing oh, yeah. tenor and him and Kylie. Look, but then when we found uh, Brian Loren, who was oh, Brian Hudson God. at the time, mm -hmm. we like used to call him like a little kid. He was there. something. He, he, he was, still is something. He's phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal keyboard player. And Larry said, Ted, you got to hear him play guitar too. And drums. I was like, what? Larry said, wow, this he was he was he was like a he could genius. play everything. Yeah, he was like a little musical genius, you know. Um, when he came on board, when we got in the studio and he came on board and I started hearing stuff, I was like, oh, <laughs> he was he was awesome. He his his musicianship and um uh combined with what we were doing, it took us to the next yeah. level. You know, that, that Zoom album was uh, something something like, you know, as we graduated and grew and matured musically, mm -hmm. you know, you could hear it in that particular album. Uh, and uh, the songs, mm -hmm. uh, the, the execution, you know, of mm -hmm. each song, the vocals, uh, the, the the rhythm section, you know, we we locked. It, everything changed. Everything changed. Everything you know? changed. And uh, when Freddie came in and started singing, and uh, Terry, Khalif, Larry, and Alfonso was doing backgrounds, it was it was a whole different thing. It was like whoa. But um, who was I forget who was doing the uh, horn section? Was Khalif? Yeah, we. They had know, different. People. They had different horn players well, on this uh, one. I'm art, you. remember Art. Our K part was gone. Our K part was gone. Erskine was gone. Erskine was gone. Yeah, Erskine, Erskine was another was gone. one. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jimmy Lee, trombone, he was gone. They were gone after like the uh, second or third album. Mm -hmm. They were gone. Uh, but just jumping back, Erskine Williams. Really bad. Phenomenal. He came in. You know, he was there from the beginning with you know uh, with the with the Blue Magic crew uh, and. Uh, Actually, it was two songs that he wrote on that first album. Uh, I know why, and I can't remember. But he, his singing, his his performing for the records that he did was like it wasn't Ohio player, but it was I, like uh, Buffalo, yeah. New York, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he had like a whole nother thing going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I kind of was like, we was like, we need to go in that direction. But Alan Rubens and them had another 
they wanted us to they would they they were still trying to put us in like singing group mode mm -hmm. you know but you know it all worked out in the end um uh, erskine ended up uh coming back through uh with with uh rick james stone city band yeah. and he invited us all down to to the uh tour you know to, while they were on tour he invited us to the show at the spectrum and, and it was awesome, you know, and he was getting doing some featured parts up there, too. And that was really good to see how his career took off. Now, is he, are you still in contact with this guy? No, I can't. I can't. Okay. I can't find him. I've been looking him up on Facebook. Last I heard, those guys were, uh, uh, Brian Williams told me they were doing a Stone City Band review hmm. somewhere in Florida or something. But But I never was able to get in touch with him. You know, but he'll pop up sooner or later. Yeah, maybe he'll listen yeah, to this yeah. interview or mm -hmm. he'll go on Facebook yeah. and yeah. Awesome keyboard player. Uh he he was very talented. You know, he brought in a different flavor uh music wise, you know, early on when we were doing things, you know, because you know, he had that he was from Buffalo, New yeah. York. He wasn't yeah. from Philly, so he brought in a whole different feel, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but uh you know, I just wanted to mention him. You know, I yeah, you got, kind of slipped my mind. I got yeah, to mention I, Erskine uh, mm -hmm. and then Brian. You know, and those guys kicked in. You know, um, who's this Mike that? Um, uh, what's his name? What are you talking about over here? Mike Tyler. Mike Tyler, guitar player. Yeah, yeah right here, right here. Moises. Yes, it's Moises Lebest. That's yeah, Larry Lebest. Yeah, but he said just hung out with Mike. Oh, he was hanging out with Mike Tyler. <laughs> I talked to Mike yesterday. Tell him I said I hi, man. Okay. Uh, Marco Garrett. That's people see. right from Williamsport. I mm -hmm. see some of my friends from Williamsport. Tyler. There's Gerald Sticks James. That's Fat Larry's first cousin. Yeah, and he always contacts me mm -hmm. on, on yep. Facebook. Soul Divine. <laughs> Isn't that something? We was just talking about them before yeah. the interview. The Soul Divine, Gerald James. Yeah. What's happening, Gerald? Yeah. <laughs> I finally got out here with Doris. Yeah. And we uh, love it every minute of it because mm -hmm. it's so good to be yeah. connected again. Have you ever thought of putting things back together again with the band, you the best, and still a lot of you? I um we you know, like me and Larry Lebest, we talked a couple times on Facebook, you know, and you know, I was like, uh, I wish we, you know, I knew his situation at the yeah, time, you yeah, know, yeah. being a caregiver for his dad. And I was like, I, you know, just pray that someday, you know, me and him could get back together and doing some plan. And um, he said it, it possibly could happen. Yeah. Um, and like you just having, uh, you had Jimmy Lee, you had Hart, you had, uh, <laughs> I had, all, right? you had uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, yeah, I didn't get Terry Price yet, but Shula, I'm coming, Terry. Yeah, Nebo, you know, yeah, it's the crew, you know. Them, yeah. yeah, so you know, all things are possible, you know. Unless I will just leave it up to God, you know, and, God. and pray if something's going to happen, it'll happen, you know. But this right here, you know, coming here doing this interview and knowing my boy's been here, right. you know, it's like I got to get there because yeah. when I saw Larry LeBest on there. I was like, how you get him out the house? Then I was like, then I was like, I got to get there. Yeah, I got to get here. I got to get here. Larry the best guy here, I got to get here. You know, the 176 miles from here to Williamsport. So is it that far? They're 176 miles. But I mean, we got me and my wife, we got between us is 19 grandkids. You know, yeah. let's introduce your wife. Oh, uh, my okay. wife Laverne sitting over there. Hi, uh, a former vocalist with Lonnie Gamble, with sound check, sugar and spice. Williamsport, Pennsylvania. That's where I met my wife, and y'all know, know my wife. She just celebrated, <laughs> just celebrated her sixty third birthday yeah. on August the sixth. You. you know, we hanging out. We came down to uh, pick up some of the grandkids, and uh, we're going to get back to Williamsport tonight. But they have like this whole week. It's called Homecoming Week in Williamsport, okay. and um, my church does this huge block party every year on Wednesday. It's always on Wednesday. This was the 26th one. And um, we had close to maybe 1,500 to 2,000 people out there yesterday. Mm. Everything free every year. My church is Antioch Baptist Church, Williamsport. It's at Cherry and High Street. Okay. Free okay. breakfast and lunch five days a week. Mm. Uh, then they have like in the afternoon when kids, home, yeah. when, in the afternoon mm -hmm. when kids get out of school, they had a thing. It's a different name now. It was called a sugar shack, but like they give away all kinds of snacks and treats to the kids when they get out of school. They come by. It got so popular that they had to put a crossing guard and the signs right out on the corner 
of the church because there were so many kids coming mm -hmm. from all but over. That's great. You know, to, to do that. That's then great. uh that's at great. the beginning, like starting in May, they started doing the little smaller block parties all over the city. And um then the big one ends up right at the block where the church is at. Hospital took over the neighborhood. They bought property and expanded the hospital, but they left these big giant lots right there. They take care of the lots, grass, everything, and they take care of the lots. They allowed us to use them. They allowed, we've been using them for like the last three or four years. And so we're doing like, when we have our block party, it's like a, a four block radius all the way around. It's that much grounds. Uh, one side is just strictly all kinds of rides and toys, mm -hmm. games mm -hmm. and big balloon toys and everything for the kids and food. You know, it's like a food court set up. Mm -hmm. uh, they were they were uh, they did the split chicken did the chicken coop last night. <laughs> they they said split Cornish hens. They split Cornish hens. I mean, how many y'all had about a thousand or more Cornish hens? And they split them and they had like maybe five grills out there grilling chicken. Uh, then one of the vocalists with my praise and worship group, a Spanish lady, uh, she uh, made this wild rice and. Mm. Beans, I mean, look, they were lining up for okay. the food. It was well, awesome. I want you to tell me your plans for the future. Tell me your goals. Uh, I know that we may, we can get this mm. band back together. Maybe we can do something. Musically, you know? I've been into the gospel thing from 2005. And uh, I don't, I know my, my pastor and, and everybody, you know, when you get in the church, you've been playing the church for so long, they don't want you to go back, know. you know, to the, to the R and B and stuff like that. Um, I've had albums and records out and stuff still selling. I got to get in touch with BMI to find out what's okay. the hold up. But mm -hmm. I think I got to register everything online okay. to uh, start getting my residuals again. And uh, okay. but uh, you know, I I just kind of like let 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 go and let God do yeah. things. You know, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. You know, uh, my heart is always. I mean, I'm from Philadelphia, music-wise. My heart yeah. is always, and plus, when I I got a what's that FM Sirius FM satellite radio mm -hmm. in my vehicle, and they play Fat Larry's band music. Yeah, they yeah. play. They, I hear our music on the uh, on Isn't the uh, on the station. Yeah, music well, you hear it on Philly Live Radio also. That's our radio station. At City Line, what is it? Philly Live Radio. Okay, That's I got what you interviewing on right now. Oh, cool. <laughs> I gotta bring that up. Y'all got that plug, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, um, you threw that plug in there. Y'all got it. Know, we we want to be able to keep con keep connected mm -hmm. and uh, know what you're doing. All mm -hmm. of the artists that comes on the show, we want to stay connected and stay in touch and follow you because this is not the end of your music musical journey. Right. You're still going through it. Still going through and it. And we yeah. want to go through it with you. And mm -hmm. if it, you have any shows or any even if it's choir kinds of things, whatever it is mm -hmm. that we can promote, like Gilbert said, this is our radio station, Philly Live Radio, mm -hmm. and it's 24-7. Oh, and 65. we play 65. Three, 365. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our own recording studio. So when you say that you're conflicted about going back to secular, guess what? We've got a whole lot of of songs we created that are inspirational, inspirational music. So yeah. Inspiration. Yeah, inspiration. yeah that's, that's, you can do that here yeah. too. Inspirational that. music is, that. is, yeah, is, uh, I mean, I'm comf I, I, I mean, all the records and albums that I performed on and played on and, and wrote songs and stuff, you know, nobody could take that away from me, right. you know, not even through the church or whatever, but, uh, you know, uh, in the future, you know, inspirational music that's mm -hmm. is right. to be powerhouse stuff, yeah. you know. We, we sat here for seven years, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> when I came back home, my mom passed away, and it's just, we, we sat here for seven years, and we wrote songs. Mm -hmm. But my heart was no longer in R&B, right. you know, because okay. I was so thankful and grateful for everything that God had done, mm -hmm. you know, and for bringing me back home safe, that my heart went a different way. Okay. And it went into and to telling my story and thanking God. Okay. So we have quite a few songs that I think you would be interested in. And if not, we get together and what? Create. Mm -hmm. We create, create a some song, things, yeah. Okay? Yeah. You have a studio here, mm -hmm. okay? 
Um, you have a good engineer right over there. That's Mr. Gil Lomax. He wants me to say his name. I'll say his name. <laughs> <laughs> you <got> another plug. <laughs> so, you know, we want to follow you. Mm -hmm. So that whatever your goals may be in the near future, we want to be part of. Okay, I'm in Make touch. Sense? I'm with that. Yep. Okay. I'm with that. All right. Now, um, what information or encouragement, I should say, that you have that you would give to music lovers out there that's trying to get in music? Uh, things are a lot different now since everything is online. You got Facebook. You got all this Internet stuff. So uh, they even have categories on the awards, on all awards for the internet, the, the, mm -hmm. the artists that are breaking through on the internet. And they, I mean, it's like you could, we got a, a young man named Eric Hernandez, rap, a gospel rapper right in our uh, church, right? Mm -hmm. He put on a powerful performance yesterday. He wow. did all his stuff on his phone, <laughs> sampled everything, got the apps and everything and did his thing if you Shout heard if you yeah. heard his tracks mm -hmm. you would be like what i'm talking some fidelity powerhouse stuff and these the way things are set up now if once you get everything done music wise you could start like promoting and doing everything on your own yeah that's you know? how it is now. yeah that's how it is now that's so is. the way it is now is like totally different from, from the way we had to do things. You could shop your songs right on the internet. Uh, matter of fact, you could put your songs out and push them yourself and, and uh, start making up your own CDs and doing the whole oh, nine yeah. yards mm -hmm. before, and then get, walking in and trying to get a deal. You know, you coming in, they coming in nowadays the with job is half full done. package. Yeah, yeah, the job is half yeah. done. They're coming in with their own it. package. So mm -hmm. uh, it's like, it's amazing how it's done nowadays, you know. I saw one guy on one of the award shows. He was playing his phone. He had a band. He was singing. And whatever the app is that he had on his <laughs> phone, he was playing the parts that he had to play, and he was singing. And they featured his him on, a, on one of those big award shows. I'm not sure if it was the, the Grammys or what it was, but he was, I was like, oh. Yeah, things 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 have changed mm -hmm. so much that you have to just get caught up in it and learn it all over again. Yeah. But we want to encourage those mm -hmm. that's trying to get into music. You know, if if they keep if they going, right? if they just keep going, keep, keep going. pushing. Whatever you do, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. And that give came it, from. Did all. that come from Whitehead? That came Fadden from McFadden and Whitehead. And Whitehead. That was be strong, whatever you do, be strong, you know. And that goes for the young kids coming up. But that's something and a lot of older musicians know that. But uh, the the young kids coming up, just be strong at what you're doing, what you're playing, what you're singing, the whole bit, you know. And, and whatever you're you're putting together as a band or whatever, just make it strong. Make it strong. Can't go wrong. Now, Ted, how can we reach you if, if someone wants to reach you? Do you have an email? My email is uh, tbl310 at aol.com. And my Facebook page is just my name, Ted Cohen. Okay. <laughs> It'll right. come right up. Well, I'm so excited that you were here. Um, I thank God for that, cause this because we lived like all this time and mm -hmm. we're still live yeah, alive still alive yep. about and able to talk about it yeah. and blessing. that's what i want to say to facebook family and friends that you know if you have a musical journey and you want to tell your story then we're here all you have to do is contact us and our email which i never can remember is our email which you never can remember yeah is give it to me Philly live radio at gmail.com Okay, and if you want to review or view this, yours, oh my my email, I never can remember. But it's, sim <laughs> it's simply <laughs> music one at Verizon.net. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and and if you want to go back and review this uh, video, you can go to Philly, Philly Live Radio on your internet on your on your computer, or if you already have the app on your phone, you just go ahead and download the Philly Live Radio app if you've got an iPhone. 
if you got, excuse me, if you have an Android. If you have an iPhone, go to uh, TuneIn, install mm -hmm. TuneIn, and look for Philly Live Radio. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and Gilbert Lomax is the producer of the show, and he produces three other shows. And mm -hmm. one is Simply Music Kids. Yeah. Um, this is the indie show. He produces uh, the Quarter Alpha mm -hmm. Show and Let's Talk. Yes. Okay. So, you know, join us uh, on all four of these shows if you can, but at least make one or two per week. Can I throw something in here yes, before, before we cut out? Because our time hey, is Rodney. short. Yeah. Chad said something earlier about uh, uh, Tea Life. And we, we, tea we Life. Say, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Tea Life will be joining us next Thursday. <laughs> Idols. <laughs> at four o'clock and i am so excited oh, yeah. about that you know it's hard tracking you guys down but i got him t and life he, the butlers he committed raw soul <laughs> back in the day yeah he'll be here with us <laughs> yep, so tune in tune in tune in for t life mm -hmm. next thursday at four o'clock okay okay and i thank you facebook family and friends and then we'll be back at seven with Kenny Jenkins. Right. Ted, seven o'clock, right? Any gigs coming up? Kenny Jenkins, guitar player? Yeah. yeah. Wow. We'll be here at seven o'clock in a few minutes. Hey, Talk about Sid High. Yeah, right. guitar. Oh, Ted. Jimi Hendrix. Ted, <laughs> do you have any gigs coming up? Uh, I just, no gigs, no gigs outside the church, just performances at the church. Mm -hmm. Prayerfully, I'll be performing at Antioch Baptist Church in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, Cherry and High Street. Prayerfully, I'll be performing with my praise and grip. Praise Antioch Praise and Worship Group this mm -hmm. Sunday. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Facebook family and friends. And we'll see you in the next 30 minutes with Kenny Jenkins. Bye bye. All right. Bye. All right. Let's close up. <laughs> oh, that was fun.